The music is part of the slide deck. We just embedded a tiny little YouTube music video for you to have, um, so we didn't have that awkward silence before we began. Yes, yes. so um, welcome everyone. Um, so happy to have you. I know that we are looking at screens all day long and it's, um, it takes all we have to work after our work day. So we're, we're happy to have you here. Um, our uh, presentation is gonna be split into three. The first part is going to be um, uh, myself and Jen um, kind of telling about the, the why and how this uh, presentation came to be. And the middle part will be an interactive uh, part with you joining in our Seesaw class. And the last part will be questions and any comments you might have for us. So we are going to get started. Um, again, I'm Kathleen Schaefer. I, I work for Saddleback Valley Unified School District. I am an educational technology TOSA. And I'm here with my colleague, Jen. Jen, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Jen Anderson. And I have been, I started teaching in 1992. I don't even do the math anymore. But um, most of my time in, in third grade, which is my, was my sweet spot for elementary, but I, we are both, Kathleen and I are at Tech TOSA's K-12. And so this is our favorite thing is to work with teachers and, and to share Seesaw with you today. Thanks. So before we get started, I wanted to address um, home learning codes in Seesaw. Um, I don't know, you know, if some of us that have used Seesaw in our physical classroom, um, if you notice the blue home, get home learning codes, um, that is for at home learning. Uh, the difference is if you are in primary and your kids scanned a QR code to, or put a text code in to get into your class, this is who that's really for um, because it, it uh, allows students to see only their own work. Um, you can, if you had your kids join your Seesaw class uh, using their Gmail accounts, their school Gmail accounts, all you would have to do would be to go to the wrench in the top right corner and just turn off students can, can see each other's work. And that's just the same as using a home learning code. But if you didn't have your kids join using uh, their Gmail account, their school Google account, and they've always just scanned a QR code, you definitely do want to give them the home learning codes um, just for privacy. Um, but uh, there's links to the presentation, links to home learning codes, the words on top that, that go over exactly how to do that if you're not familiar. Um, so I want to clarify the title of our, our uh, presentation, uh, The Power of Provocations. I, I um, read a book called Inquiry Mindset by Trevor McKenzie and Rebecca Bathurst Hunt a year, year and a half ago. And um, Trevor's a 12th grade English teacher and Rebecca's a kindergarten teacher and uh, they both use inquiry in the classroom. Um, and this book is just, it, it really simplified everything for me. But what I did when I read the book is I kept thinking about Seesaw and how it would make things move quicker and allow me to get feedback faster. Um, so again, using provocations in the classroom does not have, have to do with technology, but this presentation is going to show you how to do it with Seesaw. So again, and I think it, yeah, I think it's awesome because I saw that Trevor retweeted your um, presentation tweet this morning and I was like, yay, Trevor, that's so awesome that he's very responsive on Twitter, which is fun to connect educators. We do yeah. kind of refer to him as your Twitter boyfriend, which is kind saying. of, okay. Um, yes. Yeah. So again, a provocation is just a prompt artifact or image or video that sparks curiosities in kids. Um, and you'll hear me say provocations, you'll hear me say inquiry a lot in this presentation. So it's, um, if you're introducing provocations to your kids, um, in, if we were in our real classrooms, I wouldn't, and if Seesaw was new, I would do one thing at a time. I would do it whole group, and I would show them the questions I'm going to ask them, and we do it whole group so they get used to those questions. Once they're used to the, the questions and, and how, how to move forward, then I would introduce Seesaw. But we have no choice now, so we're going to introduce both at the same time. I'm going to um, 
I'm going to put up a photo and this photo, is, I want you to think about what you see in the photo, what you think about it, and then what you still wonder about it. And um, for this picture, we use this slide in, in class. Um, we put a little timer on the left hand side. If we were using this in class, we would give them the kids 10 seconds to look closely at the colors, textures, um, the clues in the picture. And then we use the timer on the right to either have them write in their wonder journals or talk to an elbow partner about what they saw, what they thought about it, and what they still wonder about it. So instead, we don't have elbow partners today. Um, so and we don't have a wonder journal in front of us. So um, go ahead and use the chat feature, um, taking a look at this picture or part of a picture um, and tell us what you see, what you think, and what you still wonder. So as you're doing that, Jen's gonna man the, the chat room and, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the picture and um, places where I get pictures and how I don't put the entire picture in because you really want kids to be wondering about parts. So it's not always a real obvious picture. You would always use um, provocations before you actually teach a unit um, to kind of see what they already know. So instead of bringing your teaching materials out on day one, this is what we're going to learn about today, you would give them hints the week before and see how much they already knew because they already know everything. Let's move on. So that is the basis for inquiry here. And Jen, do you have any comments coming in? We do a lot about, um, we see a critter or a tongue, um, maybe a bug, a mouth. Uh, I wonder if it's still alive, if it will crawl out, it's an insect. It might be a little gross because it's in her mouth, which we love because every student will go, ooh, and then you, you got them already just with an ooh. Um, <laughs> strange creatures, I wonder how fast you could spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> Whose taste buds are working right there? So, um, so yes, <laughs> you can start this. Well, let me show you first what it is. Awesome. So we get a lot of our photos from um, Britannica Image Quest. It's, uh, you don't have to worry about copyright. Everything's right there. You'll notice that the whole picture is there. You can totally see it's a mouth, but it really is. It's a man eats small cricket, edible insects. So this could be a launch for a nutrition, a nutrition unit. It could be a launch for um, senses. It could be a launch for insects. It really could be a launch for many different things. Um, but it really sparks conversation in the classroom. And if you do it through Seesaw, if you do it through Seesaw, then you can see what everybody already knows and what they're still wondering. So when, it's, when you're ready to start the unit, you can address all those wonders right off and um, dig deep faster. Um, so again, this was just a photo provocation. Um, on the notes section of this slide deck, I have, um, Lots of different places that uh, we get photos for our provocations, but one of my favorites um, is, let me open it up, um, Trevor McKenzie has an Instagram and, and his posts, there are actually, tap, it's like a repository for all of his favorite provocation pictures. So um, they are random, but this is like his library of pictures that he uses. So I look here, I look on Picks for Learning, I look at ImageQuest. Um, there's several websites in the notes section of my, um, of my um, slide deck. And we're just gonna close. Okay. Um, so any other interesting ones, Jen? Sorry, I muted myself. Um, no, a lot of it, uh, why would somebody volunteer for this? Uh, <laughs> are the taste buds working? Strange creatures. Uh, I, wonder if it, I wonder if it would bite. Excellent. Okay, thanks, thanks. So we're gonna move on again. Uh, that word is gonna come up a lot, but truly it's uh, a provocation is, is made to, to stir up thought or stir up wonder in our students. And um, it's really important that they're wondering and questioning in class. Um, that keeps their brain going. Um, this is from 
Trevor's book, but truly, and it's, it's geared towards students. It says, follow your curiosity, follow new understandings. They'll lead you to unexpected and excited new destinations. But I think this is true for students, but I also think it's true for teachers. Um, you know, I, I, I read his book. I was curious to see how it could fit together using Seesaw. And I came up with a whole new way of doing my inquiry in the classroom. Um, so again, not just for kids, but for also for us. Uh, and I usually don't put this many words on a slide, but this was this is pretty amazing. This is from an online pu publication called uh, MindShift. And it was an article on just kids and curiosity. And it just, um, it just, it just, validated what I've been thinking about Seesaw and using this. So students curiosity along with their written or verbal predictions. So they can write what they know on Seesaw. They can say what they know on Seesaw. They can draw what they know and predict on Seesaw. So it gives them lots of different ways to show what they know. This tunes their brains into the perfect zone for attentive focus. So I know that's where I want my kids in the perfect zone for attentive focus. Um, so they say that they're like adults placing bets on a racehorse. Students may not even be interested in the subject matter, but their brains need to find out if their predictions are correct. Kind of like the race ticket holder needing to know if he holds the winning ticket. So again, I want my kids to, I want their brains tuned in and in the perfect zone for learning. So this kind of does that for us. So um, what I learned is keep it simple. So uh, again, I asked you earlier, what, you, what do you see, what do you know, and um, what do you wonder? Um, I, I learned from, from doing this in different grade levels that uh, kindergarten and first graders know everything. Um, so I tend to use what do you know with primary, and then I tend to use what do you think with, um, with upper grades. Um, because if I say, what do you know to a sixth grader, they're hesitant really to tell me because they're, they don't know if they're right or not, but they'll write a lot more if I put, what do you think? So just, you got to kind of know your class. Um, in Inquiry Mindset, he goes, he and Rebecca go through the entire inquiry cycle. Um, and as I read through it, you know, seesaw alerts were going off in my brain and and how it can connect and so there were there's some amazing sketch notes in this book but i just uh tab four i wanted just to share with you you can do it by starting off your unit and he has four pillars of inquiry but delve into your curiosity kind of goes with with what we are doing also uh, accessing prior knowledge and knowing what the kids already know. Um, it really, it really deepens their understanding beyond just memorizing facts and content. If they know just a little bit about something, it's just like dangling something and they want a little more. And of course, when they want a little more, they're motivated, they're engaged. And, um, you know, using Seesaw can empower that student using their voice and, and choice for, for showing what they know. Also, this stuck out to me as well. Ways that you can identify wonderings. Like we're gonna talk all about Seesaw today, but there are so many different ways in the classroom. And I love this sketch note. You know, he has virtual ways. I mean, Padlet you could use instead of Seesaw, but you're gonna love Seesaw more. And Flipgrid would work too. And then there's a lot of physical parts of this classroom. A physical wonder wall where they're writing right on the wall. A physical wonder table a physical wonder journal. So it doesn't take technology to um, put inquiry in your classroom, but um, now that we're all at home, we're glad we know how to use Seesaw for it, or you will know. And then last, again, the reason I started using Seesaw six years ago was the whole reflection piece. Um, kids can reflect on their own learning. I'm trying to get my little and if you look at the inquiry student this is just straight from um, trevor and rebecca's book but it could be a big seesaw on all three of these seesaw can capture learning in the form of video or a photo or drawing um, seesaw allows kids to reflect on their learning um, either 
in you uh, using their label feature, their caption feature, or the comment feature. And Seesaw allows them to share their learning. So right now they'll share their learning with you. And if you have parents signed up with their parents, but since we're at home and we're using the home learning codes or turning off, you can, you cannot see each other's work. Um, if you wanted your kids to see each other's work, you could use the Seesaw blog feature, which is really easy and secure. And um, it also, uh, you know, it's password protected. So there's, it's very, very safe. If you wanted them to practice giving each other feedback because they can't see each other's work right now. So this was the very first provocation activity I ever did probably over a year ago. And I, I included this picture in a seesaw activity. And the activity looked like this. I gave him directions to look at the attached photograph, look at the colors and textures, and then they tapped on the add button and they were to answer questions. These three questions, the same three questions. What do you see? What do you know? And what do you wonder? So this is the same four, I think it was a four or five class, same class, but look at the variation of responses. Like there were kids that only knew that there were nine links. But then there were other kids that knew about chlorophyll and deciduous leaves and the amount of light they receive. So it really gives you a quick snapshot of what your kids know, kind of just like a little formative assessment. Also, what they want to know, you know, some, some just wondered if they were from the same tree. Others talked about reverse rainbow order. So already ahead of time, you know what kids need to know. And um, when we were in the classroom, if they could see each other's work, they could literally answer each other's questions. But I know we're at home and they can't see each other's work unless we put it on the Seesaw blog. But it gives you a chance to give them feedback with their wonderings. Anything to share, Jen? Um, no, I just, I really agree. It, it, it allows students to have that creativity to share and to wonder and that inquiry mindset you comes to really high and quickly just by looking at an image. Okay, so we are going to explore. This is the second part of our little presentation today. We're going to explore as students. So Jen is going to um, put uh, my Seesaw code in the uh, the chat, but it'll also be up here. I just want you to know ahead of time, where if we have time, we're going to part have you participate in an image provocation. And I'll tell you how I did it. And then we're going to do the video provocation and I'll show you how I get videos in there. And then if we have time, the artifact provocation where there would be like a, you know, if we were in our physical classrooms, there would be a wonder table of things on the table that we're going to learn about next week, but I'm putting it on the table this week to see how much they know. So um, if we get there, um, we get there. So <clears throat> I'm going to have you go to, if you're on your laptop, you can open a new window or if you have a phone, and if you have the class app on your phone, you could do that too. Um, you're going to go to app dot seesaw dot me if you already have an account as a teacher it will automatically bring up your teacher account so you want to go up to the very top left side and click on your name and then click on the little cog wheel and sign out as a teacher to participate in this part of the um, presentation so you're going to sign out as a teacher. And once you do that, it's going to have you log in again. And this time, we're going to log in as a student. Once you, once you click I'm a student, we are not going to use the top portion of this. We're not going to click on the G or email or anything. We're only going to go down to the bottom. So if you're on a phone, you can scan the QR code to get into my class. And if you're on another tab on your phone, you're just going to put in the text code here. Oops, did we not fix that, Miss Jen? I can give it to you right now. It's S 
B F S E U. It's in the there it is. I just um I'm just refreshing. Got it. I'm gonna do that. And again. it's in the chat, it's in the chat as well for everybody. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You can copy and paste it. Okay. And let me go catch up. All right. So again, when you get into the class, just really quickly. To... Sorry, Kathleen. Um, yes, we want you to sign in as a student. People are asking sign in as a student. So when you come into this window right here that Kathleen's showing you, you're going to hit sign in, sign in as a student. And on the next slide, you can either put in the code or you can, if you can hold it up to the screen and use the QR. And the code is also in the chat. So um, if I go from this slide, or if you've already um, have my presentation on another tab, you can get it there too. But once we log in, you should see my class that looks like this activate the power of Seesaw. Notice that there's no names on the right. It's just when we do an activity, you'll just put it in um, the, the letter that starts the first letter of your name when it's time. Um, so I am going to go ahead and kind of get started with this. Remember the code is in the chat in case you haven't put that in yet to get into my class. <clears throat> So it automatically, when you go into Seesaw, and you might be a student in um, a, another class that comes up too. So it, it should you should say activate the power of Seesaw. If not, you can go up to the left-hand corner and there you might have your other classes there. I feel weird not being able to get feedback from you, but <laughs> um, so it always defaults to the journal. So we're gonna hit on the light bulb on the right hand side. And Seesaw allows you to put in activities before you actually use them, which is nice. And I, ahead of time, uh, I already put in two photo inquiry activities. So photo inquiry activities that I put in, there's one for primary and there's one for um, four through six. So don't do both. So you're gonna choose one, or the other. And you'll go through step by step. And I, I, I'll choose this one and go through this one, but you can choose either one. And I will, um, oops. Um, it says, look closely at the photo. When you tap on the photo, it gets bigger. So you can look closely at the colors and the textures and where it might be and how many animals <laughs> might be in that photo. Some kids think there's two. And um, then it says push the add response button. So you push the add response button. And then when kids get here, and by the way, Seesaw has come so far in the last six years, you can make all your templates right in Seesaw. It used to be in the old days, I'd make them in Google Drawings, make it a, a JPEG, then bring it over so they could write. I mean, it's so easy. So all the activities we're doing today, you have access to as a teacher if you wanted to try them with your kids and drop them in your, um, your Seesaw classroom. I also have a link to my entire library that you can take any of my, mine and remix or use as is. Um, but when the kids get this, they kind of lose track and they're like, I can't remember what I was looking at. So remember that you can push up here, view instructions. Oh yeah, it was those those birds, okay, so they, it reminds them what to do and then they read the next uh, direction. Use the label tool to write what you see, think, and wonder. I always, okay, so label tool, you push the T and then we just finish the sentence. So um, I see um, an eagle, maybe, um, and we would put it under that section and you might say i think you know and sometimes kids say can we write more than one thing oh yeah i'm never going to tell you you can't write more um but again for those kids that can only write one thing it's good but kids can definitely write more than a few words um i think uh it is looking at its 
reflection and I wonder um, if it's looking for food. Could possibly be. Okay, so I'm gonna move these to the right spot. My rule with these are um, once you get your content in, then you can change things like font and stuff. But first things first, though, they always have to have content in. I love Seesaw also for making templates because as you can see, I made this and they click on it, they can't move it, so I've locked it. Um, they can just move what they wrote about. I always have them read what they wrote by pushing the microphone. We won't do that today, don't feel pressure to, to do that. When you're done with yours, I'm gonna have you go ahead and push the green check. So it, and then it'll have you push your, your um, the letter. And then you will turn it in and you'll see what the teacher sees on this end. So I'm in the journal view and you can see that it, there's mine and someone with the K for the first initial has already turned one in. And at this time, as a teacher, you could be making comments. So on the, on the slide deck over here, you can, with us, you're gonna be able to see everybody's posts because I've opened it up so we can see that. But again, as a teacher, you can make a comment and um, I've linked a document that I use with kids um, and they always start with these same sentence starters. So, and then I always start with these same sentence starters. So it gets them used to um, giving feedback when they're, when they're looking at someone else's maybe in the blog now. But I, I tend to use the same type. So I always want to model really good feedback, helpful feedback, polite feedback. So those are in the presentation as well if you wanted to, to use any of those. Also um, in the note section under this activity, um, under this slide are all, again, the websites and things that I, uh, I get my photos from. So my rule is I don't, I, I make it so it's not just right in front of their face. I, I maybe cut half of it out or I zoom in or I just take a part or I did this reflection um, activity. Again, this could be, uh, I'm, I'm just talking about the four through six. Um, this could be a, a launch for, uh, you know, teaching about light when, and reflection. Could be a launch for teaching about the animal kingdom. It could be a launch for so many things. Um, and again, the K3, if you were a K3 teacher and you chose that, that could be a launch for, you know, animal protection. Um, it could be camouflage. Um, lots of different things that could, that could start a unit. Um, so as I look in the journal, as you push the green check, oops, and you can kind of get the feel for it again as a teacher. Um, I can click here, and 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 I just want to explain the view. These these people probably did theirs on a phone. That's why it looks a little different. So your kids might be on different devices. So just so you know how that works. Kathleen? Um, yes. If they can move the headers, is it just because um, that we didn't set a lock when we um, set up the activity? Yes, yes. So students can lock it into place or teachers can lock it into place, correct? Yeah, and students can unlock it if they want. I mean, they have to be looking for it, but it just, you know, it's, it's not as easy to move things by accident. Thank you. Uh-huh. So as a teacher, I would be um, looking through the feed. I would be noticing that most, most of my K3s knew it was a turtle. Um, and most of, you know, the four sixes knew something about, um, you know, reflection, like a mirror. Um, and so it gives me a better sense when I start teaching about it, um, who needs to know what. And um, who, when we're doing our Zoom sessions, who already know some of this and that they, they could they could teach a little bit about it. So that is an um, a photo inquiry activity. Again, we are going to go on to the next type of activity, which is a video inquiry activity. I want to talk a little bit about the videos. 
So there's two ways that I put videos in my activities. One is, first of all, you want your video to be no sound. So they're only get, taking things in with their eyes visually. You want it to be short, 30 seconds to two minutes, max probably. And um, they can watch it as many times as they want. But the way I get them in the activity, two ways that I do. So the first way is just like on my iPhone. I, on my, I, and I'm just getting on, on the notes to this, on, on this slide. I'm just gonna click on it so you can see it. Um, our, our iPhones have a screen recording. So I'll bring up a YouTube video and I will record the screen. These are the steps. Um, but if you've never done this before, read the red below because you have to actually go to the settings to put it in. And then I would record. It automatically puts it in my camera roll. And then I automatically can edit the ends and make it where I want and it's in my camera roll. And anything in your camera roll can be uploaded to Seesaw. Uh, and Seesaw activity. So I make a lot of my activities on my phone, or at least I'll just put my links there and then I'll go to my laptop and type out the directions and stuff. Um, also, um, I use, if I'm on my laptop, I, I might bring up a YouTube video of some sort and um, I would use Screencastify. And Screencastify is, just an extension in Google Chrome Web Store. And this is the simplest way, as most of you know now that you've been teaching from home, to make little videos of yourself, but it's also a great way to just video what's on your screen. And um, so I would just do two minutes or a minute of a video and then put it in my activity. So those are the two ways I get um, videos into my Seesaw activities. And um, so we're going to go back to Seesaw. And if you're K3, uh, I want you to follow the directions, tapping on the video, watching it, or four through six. Now, you know, because of time, maybe watch a minute. I think they're not, they're both about maybe a little over a minute, but you get the gist of it. Then tap the add response button and answer those same three questions. So why don't you give that a try? I will click on, I, I've watched the video and notice, uh, I think this might have music in the background, but I'm just looking at colors. You're gonna be amazed at how much your kids, um, you know, because Seesaw, it's every kid, every time. It's not the chosen few that know the answer they think. And you're gonna find out things about your kids that you didn't know, especially some of the vocabulary that they have that they wouldn't say if it, they were in a class of 30. Um, so as you are completing either the K3 video inquiry uh, activity or the four six, um, we are gonna talk a little bit more about um, just uh, um, making activities look like this. Jen, do you have anything to add before I go to, uh, as they're doing this, I'm just going to kind of show where I put the video in the um, making process. That sounds process. good. I'm kind of just uh, modeling some of the comments in Seesaw, so that sounds great if people can jump in and try out the video propagation. Okay, excellent. Kathleen, you might want to share too that uh, on your slide deck, all of your resources, either in the slide itself or in the presentation notes, have yes. all of your resources available for anybody who's attending or has the slide deck. So yes, all of so your resources are linked. Yes, absolutely. You're, you, the attendees are in as students now, so if they clicked on it, it would not ask to put it in your library, but when you get out of student and go back to your teacher account and click on those links, it will say save to my library. And if you'd like to save them, you can. So again, if you're interested in modeling, giving feedback, not just you, but having other kids see each other's work, I would use the Seesaw blogging feature. Um, again, if it's the very first time you've used Seesaw, just keep it simple and do it this way. But if you've been using it for a long time and kids are used to commenting on each other's work, they can't see it at home, the blog, Seesaw blog would be the perfect answer for that. Can you talk a little bit about moderating comments? Sure. Um, 
so moderating comments as a teacher looking at other students comments correct um, um what are some well, of the features seesaw offers for commenting on posts so if kids are commenting on other posts it automatically has the teacher approve the comment before it goes into the feed so the teacher is always in control the teacher gets a, a note that says so-and-so wants to comment on so-and-so and then you read it and uh, you approve it. If it's just a one word, great job, you don't approve it. You, you expect them to comment the way that you taught them. Like I did, I just give them the, the comment sheet. Also app.cisa or help.cisa.me has um, more primary type comments. Comments can also be um, audio. So kids and you, can go right into the feed and comment by using the microphone. Um, so right now you would be commenting to your kids using the microphone or just typing right underneath their post. And that's, that's great right now with a lot of type text and allows access for some students that may have trouble accessing text that allows them to have that audio feature and, and that can be also faster for some teachers to be able to quickly leave comments in here yeah. and seesaw allows you to delete or manage any of the comments as well yes so some of um some some of you are finishing the videos and and again just practicing typing in the boxes and again just Honestly, I made the templates in Seesaw. I, the little shapes are from Seesaw. I did it in about a minute making those types of templates. Um, but you'll learn a lot. You know, a lot of kids won't know the name Chrysalis. They might call it a cocoon in primary. And so you'll know ahead of time who, who knows and, and who really doesn't know. Um, the four through six video, um, I'm just looking. I don't know if we have any that did it, but the four through six video, was um, so interesting. It's actually like hot lava hitting an ice bed. And the ice goes from solid to gas. That's what's making those bubbles. So it's called sublimation. So it's actually, you know, that's what those bubbles come from because it's going from a solid straight to a gas, skipping the liquid um, phase. So super interesting, some kid, uh, you know, you, you find out what your kids know after they watch these types of videos. And again, that's just a YouTube video and I took a, a minute and a half of it. Um, anything else to say about videos, Jen? No, it's just, a, it's a great additional feature. Students are really captivated, captivated by watching videos. And so they do ignite that inquiry and wonder really quickly. And the feedback with the, the think and the wonder uh, gives you really a good formative assessment to see where you need to go from teaching or just to launch or engage an activity. Yes, and, and if I was to make one of those activities, I'm just gonna just, uh, this isn't a, a whole thing on um, Seaside in general, but I would just go to my library and I would go to um, create an activity. And I put the video or the photo that we saw yesterday, or th that we saw at the beginning of this, seems like yesterday. <laughs> um, I would put it right here. I would add the photo here, or I would add the video here. And it's usually, you know, when I click on that, I either upload the photo from my um, device, or I put it in on my phone the same way, or the link to the video or um, so any of those work, or you can, you know, actually record a real video in there and put it as a, a provocation. So, so many choices, but that's how I do it. I put it right where it says add multimedia instructions. And then the template that I make is down here. Can you click on that quickly again, the choices? Sure. I'm just gonna go or back. Or you can do that back in class. So the great thing about Seesaw is that it has these automatic six creation apps built into it. So an extra little plug for Seesaw, but it gives your students, if you're doing any work around UDL or Universal Design for Learning, Kathleen has talked a lot about how these options allow for multiple means of expression. And that's a really powerful, but it also is for representation as you as a teacher have different options in the way to deliver or to 
spark the wonder or curiosity. And the last thing, Kathleen, somebody was asking about, can you show in the class settings where to prevent others from see each, seeing each other's work? Absolutely. So it's up here in the wrench. Um, so this class is scan QR code class. So um, you won't, you don't have to do anything if you use these home learning codes, if yours is a scan QR code, like you put your students in. But if your students signed in with Google, their Google account at school, you would go down here and turn off. Students can see each other's work. You would turn it off here. And quickly, That's can you talk it. about linking? People are interested in how you would link a Google Doc or a Google Slide or even PowerPoints? Um, for activities? Into so an, in an activity. activities, link mm -hmm. it in. Okay, so you would just go, um, go to your activity library. And if you're starting from scratch, you would um, get it right here. So when you click on this, it's going to say, do you want to look in your computer? Or do you want to look in your Google Drive for what you're going to put in here? So it's really, really simple. And um, it shows up here. And then you push the green check. And then, oops. Then you just go on to the next. So activities are a whole nother hour session that I'd love to do. But um, there, if you go to help.seesaw.me and just type in making an activity, it goes through it step by step. They have so many great videos. Some are 10 minutes and some are an hour. So it, whatever you have time for. OK, if we get back to where we were, we, we, did a, um, we did a photo activity. We did a video activity. And the last one that I planned, I'm not sure I have time. How's time looking, Jen? So it's 440. Yeah, I think maybe we just talk about this and then do some Q&A. Yes, I say this one for the last because they're actually, you know, they're, they're having to do another skill, which is to take a picture and use their Chromebooks as cameras. So maybe I'll just demo it real quick and just kind of show you um, what that looks like. So I'm gonna go back to my class and um, I'm gonna go to activities. And I'm going to click, it says find an artifact on the observation table. So we don't have an observation table here, but um, I found an artifact on my desk. So I'm going to say add. And this is really important. The first five years I used Seesaw, I would just take a photo. But they've come so far that I use this drawing 99% of the time. Because the drawing, if you click it, has the camera, the microphone, the labels, the background, the shapes the pens, the captions, it has everything. So always go to drawing. So I'm gonna take a photo, I'm gonna take it right here. And then I'm gonna push the space bar to take a picture. And this allows you also, if the kids have more than one thing they wanna talk about or see a connection between two things, they could take two pictures if they wanted. And then I would use the, the label tool to write complete sentences. I see the Inquiry Mindset book. I'm going to jump in here, too. This is a great first activity if you're just introducing Seesaw to start with um, their favorite book or what they're reading independently at home right now. They can do a little book snap right in Seesaw. And then they can also have a little bit of a repository of what other people are reading recommendations. It creates a little book library. Yes, yes. Um, I think um, Trevor and Rebecca, H or no H, Rebecca, are amazing authors and teachers and then i would it, it, trevor also has another book called dive into inquiry and it's more of a um i wonder how many teachers will add inquiry into into their 
class, their virtual classrooms. So it's as simple as that. Again, I'm just using what I have here. But again, they can once they have the once they have the content, then they can change the background. Then they might want to be adding certain shapes. And I'm going to pick the arrow because this is so good for even fluency and seesaw. I just picked the arrow and I can get it ready and I'm going to put it over here. I can push the record button and now I can read what I wrote or you can take a picture of a book and read it. But I see the inquiry mindset book. I think Trevor and Rebecca are amazing authors and teachers. I wonder how many teachers will add inquiry into their virtual classrooms. And then I would just push done. So that's how they would, and then they could listen or re-record. Push the check, it goes into the, to the feed to your teacher. Okay, so we're gonna open it up to questions um, pretty, pretty quick, but um, I love this quote by Trevor. He says, in order to see results you have never seen, you will need to do things you have never done. So that again is for, for um, students, but so much for us too. Um, I had never used Seesaw in this way before. I, I just did it traditionally, um, like what they had on the website and, and, and made some different activities that went with content. But um, I never thought about using it for inquiry. And um, so I'm doing things I've never done. Um, there's a Kathy, slide. Yes? Um, can you tell, tell what age is the inquiry mindset book meant for? So inquiry mindset is for elementary, so K-6. Um, and then dive into inquiry is definitely for secondary. Both are great books, but you know, different, different lens. So in his uh, inquiry mindset, he also has different learning spaces within his physical classroom. Now I know we don't have these now because we're virtual, but I always ask the same question, how do they record all at the same time? Um, well, usually once you train them on those three questions, um, it's usually an independent activity anyway, and they're not all doing it at the same time. Uh, but when they're ready to record, I made these little boxes that were, were practically free. Um, it's a copy box and a lot of glue and um, fleece, fleece, yes, fleece, yes. Um, all the way around the outside and all the way around the inside. Um, you know, it takes a good, well, Jen will say it takes an hour, but it really only takes like a half an hour to make one. But when, after our presentation, here is a link to my video that I uh, fast forwarded. It's a 30 second video, but it goes through all the steps on how to make one of those free um, learning caves, as we call them. Can so you this talk is about the, oh, oh. the limit. Yeah, the limit on audio recording is five minutes, correct? Yes, but I don't even tell them that because I don't want to listen to five <laughs> minutes. Um, so I usually just say, um, you know, a minute. You know, sometimes they need to know. Or, and again, when they're at home, they're going to want to talk a lot longer to you. Um, but yeah, the limit's five. Do you know anything about, we have a teacher that's retired and they still have their account. Can they use it to support learners? Do you know if that's available? I'm not sure I know. So if a teacher has a Seesaw account, they always have a Seesaw account. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Any other questions? Do you want to unmute Jen or do you want to have them unmute themselves if they want to ask yes. a question? Yes, they, they can unmute themselves. It's already open. Okay. So we'll hang out here for a couple minutes and um, try to answer your questions if you have them. So we're super happy you made it to this session. Again, we know how hard it is because you are looking at a screen all day now. And so to do it at four o'clock, um, we're, we're excited you're here. So Kathy, so this is, oh, will you, you want to stop recording and then we'll go ahead and do the Q&A? That's a great idea. Thank you. Of course. All right, please jump in. Okay, this is a dumb question. It doesn't have to do with Seesaw, but how...